yet another franchise tries to move beyond a mere trilogy. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. Bring it up. All the way. Dad, you can't keep spending money on junk. I can break it down strip for parts. This stuff is what's going to put you through college. Something in here needs to make this family some money. Come on, you old wreck. Judgment day. What the hell happened to you? Look, it's not normal steel. I don't think it's a truck at all. I think we just found a transformer. Extinction? Please. These days, franchises don't die off. Remember when a trilogy was the ultimate goal? Star Wars, The Godfather, Back to the Future, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, The Lord of the Rings, Austin Powers, The Matrix, Men in Black, The Hangover even. You stopped at three. And if you were lucky, all three were good. Only Star Trek and James Bond were eternal. But thanks to the uber success of Harry Potter and the birth of cinematic universes, not to mention the decline of the mid-range movie due to DVD sales disappearing and the rising quality content on television, studios today aim to keep blockbuster franchises going as long as possible. Is your lead actor no longer a box office draw or worse, an embarrassment? Swap them out! recast, focus on their kid, or heck, even their younger selves, or bring in an entirely new character, which is what Michael Bay has done with Transformers Age of Extinction. He already swapped out Megan Fox for Rosie Huntington Whitley after Fox compared him to Hitler. And now he's gotten himself an entirely new cast because really, you're there to see giant robots in disguise. Not only as different modes of transportation, but sometimes even hiding in an overkill of special effects. What the heck am I looking at? Anyway, while well, some might feel Bay has taken a giant step backwards when it comes to storytelling, elsewhere his Transformers franchise is on the cutting edge. Not only is he going beyond a trilogy and casting hot commodity Mark Wahlberg, but he's also embracing the new global film business, especially China. Yes, Transformers 4 is not only opening worldwide pretty much day and date, sorry Spain and Japan, but it's premiering first in Hong Kong, where much of the film takes place, and a giant Optimus Prime currently joins the skyline. As we're hearing more and more these days, China is becoming a huge box office treasure trove for Hollywood, so big that it's starting to actually be reflected in the movies Hollywood is making. Aside from the location, Transformers 4 also features Chinese actress Li Big Bing and Chinese boy band star Han Gang, because hey, it's still a Michael Bay film. So will Transformers, the franchise, survive because it's at the forefront of Hollywood's evolution? One might think the quality of the film itself would factor in, but that's never slowed this franchise down before. Look, at this point, you know whether or not you like Transformers movies, or if you can stomach them. And this is more of the same, and I had my same reaction that I always have to Transformers movies, and that some parts I really liked, and then a lot of other times, I was bored. Uh, but I still think Overall, you should see it in theaters. I'll get to the details of my review in a moment, but I just want to say off the bat that I'd still recommend you go and see it. And if you're going to see it at any point, see it in theaters, because that's the way it's meant to be seen. And I just don't think it would work on the small screen because of its faults, which I'll outline in a moment. But I would go. It's the only movie playing this weekend. It's a typical fun summer turn your brain off type of movie, and it looks great in 3D. Also, there are some very good points, which I'll also outline, and I particularly like seeing China in a movie like this, which I'll also discuss. So I think it's worth seeing, both for entertainment value and if you're at all interested in the business of Hollywood and where it's going. All right, so what didn't I like? The movie is definitely too long. And we're not just talking about too long, we're talking about really two movies stuck together. The first half of the film, or maybe the first two thirds, is Transformers versus Inventors in the Government. And then the last third is Transformers Go to China. And you have the same effect as watching a double feature, and that's when you leave, your brain feels kind of squishy. And I really wish that someone would come to Michael Bay and be like, look, you've made two movies here, or one and a half, uh, we have to chop it off right here and maybe have a to be continued sign come up. Because it just hurts the franchise, and um, I think the movie would have been much more solid and better received overall if it was a little tighter in its storytelling. As for its storytelling, yes, 
there's not great storytelling in a Transformers movie, but you knew that going in. There's practi practically a disclaimer on the movies themselves at this point. Uh, and this is, again, more of the same. And I really would categorize it as board game storytelling, because video games as well have moved beyond this to have very sophisticated storytelling. But this is one area where Michael Bay lags behind for all the, as I said in the opening, for all the cutting edge elements he has elsewhere. Uh, and the reason I say board game is because it's very much about get just getting from A to B. Uh, there's really no character arc etc. I mean, there are some, like, uh, character traits that are highlighted again and again, and there are some relationships that are kind of explored, but the movie's really about, like, okay, we have to go to the lab, all right, we have to go to the desert, now to the magical forest, etc. Uh, and also, uh, to some degree, I would also liken it to a Saturday morning cartoon. Not some of the great ones, the ones that are, are really known for being exceptional, of exceptional quality, but more of the standard Saturday morning cartoon fare, where, again, you just want to turn your brain off and eat some cereal and sit on the couch because you got to sleep in and now you want to watch a cartoon. And this one's not bad. Same situation, only just substitute a movie theater for popcorn and it's a nice summer afternoon or, or evening. Uh, and a lot of the dialogue in particular is very Saturday morning cartoonish. All right, but so what did I like? Uh, I did like quite a bit. Uh, even though, as you can see, the things I didn't like kind of permeate across the entire film. All right, so what did I like? I have my notes here. Uh, well, obviously, the special effects are quite good, and I would actually go so far as to say they're the best special effects yet for a Transformers film. I loved the 3D. I thought it was very good, and the Transformers themselves looked quite good. Uh, also, the Dinobots looked fantastic. Uh, and Lockdown and his spaceship were real standouts. They were standouts. I, I did a piece yesterday, I hope you'll check it out, about what to expect for Transformers 5 and 6, and I think Lockdown probably most likely will definitely be back, and there are indeed a lot of unanswered questions left about that ship, intentionally so, very much leading into the next film. But uh, usually I get kind of lost watching these robots, but here they were very clearly uh, outlined, and you could really tell what they looked like, where their faces were, and I think it helped a lot. They moved better, I mean, as I discussed in some of my trailer reviews, they just looked a lot better, and I think that went a long way to increasing my enjoyment of the film. All right, so very good special effects. Uh, the other thing that I really liked, uh, oh yes, some wonderful themes theme park moments. Uh, I would love, for instance, to be in the back of an alien spaceship working the guns Toy Story Mania style. Uh, and I actually made a mental note to myself that I've got to go on that uh, Universal Transformers ride the next time I have an opportunity. Because it just a lot of moments where you were like, you're thinking of a ride, aren't you Paramount and Michael Bay and Steven Spielberg? Uh, and you know what, that's fun. Those are fun moments. That I, it was a highlight of the movie for me. Now, something else I liked about this film was Mark Wahlberg. I really enjoyed his work here. I think he was extremely well utilized. I love the way he worked with Michael Bay and Pain and Gain. Uh, it was one of my favorite movies when it came out. I really think it was um, uh, overlooked uh, and didn't get the credit it deserves, not only for being a good film, very well made, but a good commentary, I think, on a... Um, you know, American, the American idea of something for nothing, but this isn't a pain and gain review, but anyway, you should check that out. Uh, but I thought uh, Mark Wahlberg was used wonderfully here, and not only was he a lot of fun to watch, but I loved casting him as an inventor. I think that it's so great to see someone who looks like Mark Wahlberg playing that type of role, because I'm sick of stereotypes. We know what an inventor usually looks like, and with all due respect to the Bill Nye types, you're not the only ones who can invent. So I really liked the idea that Mark Wahlberg not only was asked to play this role, but I feel pulled it off. I bought him as an inventor, uh, as this Cade Yeager, uh, uh, lover and inventor of robots. And he had, as always, a lot of heart. Very likable character. I really liked him a lot, actually. Considerably so. Uh, and I think that a strong human lead actor like this is what this franchise desperately needs. So Mark Wahlberg, great choice. Also, uh, on, on the note of breaking stereotypes, I really liked having China's government come in just for a moment and order up their troops and their, uh, their fighter jets to help fight the, uh, you know, the Decepticons. I thought that was great because here's the thing. When do we ever see that in a Hollywood movie? When does another country step up with their military? Now, granted, we don't really get to see the military actually help. Maybe in the, uh, in the next Transformers movie we will, but it was a step in the right direction. And I really liked the last third of the film in China because of that. I loved the global feel of the movie. You know, we talk a lot about China here on Beyond the Trailer and how they're becoming uh, as big or maybe perhaps potentially a bigger box office than the United States. And you know what? That means they love movies as much as we do. So it's so great to reach across the globe uh, and share a movie with them. I really thought that was a great idea, and I think it was effectively done. And I really hope that this is the direction that Hollywood is going, not just for financial reasons or social reasons, uh, but also it's a refreshing change of pace. We've seen so many movies already the way Hollywood has usually done it. Isn't it great to open things up, have another army come in there, another location, um, be shot on location? I just think it's 
really enjoyable and I really liked that element of the film. However, I realized not all of this was actually shot on location. Of course, it was uh, quite well publicized that some of the films, that, um, some of the uh, scenes that took place in China were actually filmed in Detroit. But that's another thing that I liked about the movie. And this isn't something that everyone's going to like, but if you're like me and you really pay close attention to the way these movies are being made, I think this will also help you like the movie more as well. And that is, I really liked seeing how it came together. I've been editing and going over, you know, I have someone who helps me on some of the edits here, uh, but you know, I, I go over each one. Uh, and so I've been looking at a lot of pictures of Transformers behind the scenes. Uh, so by actually, uh, my editor, Matt Colby, uh, should also probably enjoy this film as well, because he's really been looking at a lot of Transformers photos. So I've seen the shots, I've seen them you know, on location, and it was really fun to see, oh, that's how that shot came together. Oh, you put a Transformer there. Oh, that's so interesting. I just, and oh, oh look, I, I recognize that's the Detroit set from the set photos I've been looking at, but you know, if I didn't have looked at those set photos, I think you did a pretty darn good job of matching China, and it blends seamlessly. And China, by the way, overall looks very good in this movie. I mean, of course, it's through the lens of Michael Bay, so everything looks good, but it's really very respectful of the, of the country uh, and its culture. I, I really liked that a lot. Uh, but without, you know, making a joke out of it, as I said, respectful. Uh, it was another metropolis, another great city, a global city in the world. We're used to mostly being in, uh, I think, Europe, South America to some degree these days. Brazil's getting a lot of play, but it's nice to see this move to Asia. The Karate Kid 2 did very well. Uh, I mean, the Karate Kid, I'm sorry, I'm talking about Karate Kid 2 a lot these days. But that's another film that I think really respectfully utilized uh, current Asian um, uh, locale uh, quite well. And I think, obviously, to its uh, success at the box office. But uh, that's what I liked about this film, and you saw what I didn't like. So I have to say, this is a movie for Transformers fans. And based on the box office for the first three movies, there are a lot of Transformers fans. Am I a Transformers fan? Yes, I'm a casual Transformers fan. At the end of the day, I had a good time. I had a smile on my face for a good part of the film. And you know what? Just think of the boring parts as built-in bathroom breaks. And I would very much like to see where the franchise is going next. So that's my review of Transformers Age of uh, Extinction. I'm curious to know what you guys think. I'm hearing a lot of other bad reviews coming out. Uh, and I've seen some of you really trash the film. If you've gotten, if some of you have gotten to see it already. Uh, do you think that I've drunk the Kool-Aid? Uh, or do you see where I'm coming from? Or are you like me? and you are not afraid to admit that you enjoy these Transformers movies. All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review. The spoiler review will be going up shortly, if not already. I hope you'll watch that as well. Uh, and you can check out some more episodes right now.